Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Thursday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers finish off the trip with a win. They're one of the hottest teams in the Western Conference. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. It's always free. It's never going to be shoved behind some disgusting paywall. Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you can go to hang out with over twenty three thousand subscribers, Andy, all of whom are uh, kind of excited. I think about the the end results, if nothing else, of the Lakers road trip. They finish it off uh, with a five and one mark. They have now won nine of ten. Uh, and are officially one of the hottest teams in the Western Conference and the NBA since the All-Star break. Plenty of stuff to get into, including uh, a, an update of sorts on Jared Vanderbilt. Uh, so a lot to get into, Andy. Uh, I do want to let people know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. So uh, the Lakers wasn't a, a, a game that you're going to put in the time capsule or uh, take the box score and stick it on the fridge. But 35 and 18 from Anthony Davis, 25, 7 and 9 from LeBron. The Lakers, they beat Washington on Wednesday, 125, 120. They finished the trip 5 and 1 and everybody gets to go home with the record that they needed. Uh, when they left town a week and a half ago, Andy. D'Angelo Russell gave an interview. He did the walk-off interview for ESPN Radio uh, 710, the Laker affiliate, and I happened to be doing the post-game show. So I heard D'Lo talk afterwards about how they were, I think, mentally looking forward to getting back to L.A. They have two days off before their next game against Cleveland. Um D'Lo admitted they relaxed. He actually used the word disrespected, talking about how uh, they treated – he was talking specifically the last handful of minutes of the game, but I think he could also include, say, the first 43 of them as well. Well, um, parts of it, parts of the first 43. They, There was a lot of playing with your food in this game. Um the Wizards got off to a really hot start. They they got off to a 19-8 lead after, I think, three or four minutes. Um, and Hit their first they, five threes. Yeah, the Lakers were very, very uninterested in playing defense. And a lot of this game, you know, whether you're talking about the TV broadcast with Stu Lance and Billy Mack or the radio call with John Ireland and former Showtime champion Michael Thompson, they all were talking about how the Lakers looked bored during this game and looked like they wanted to be somewhere else. Again, I, I don't, and I don't want to harp on this because in the end, I don't think it really matters that much. I'm just trying to provide context of what happened in this game. Yeah, I, the, the wizards do not deserve credit for any degree of suspense. Anybody felt in this game, the Lakers were largely building up leads, then losing focus Building the lead back up, losing focus. Building it back up, losing focus. Right, and then yeah. like, the, the, it got tight at the end. Ironically, you know, after it looked like it was over, because the the deep, deep, deep part of the bench, you know, your Maxwell Lewis's and your your Colin but Castleton's. Even before uh, that, no, I understand. With like, I, with I, like I, two minutes. No, but I'm saying even in the last two minutes, because this really gets to the whole disrespect factor. The Lakers, they were up. I don't remember exactly how many points, but there's like two minutes left in the game. I think they were up anywhere from eight to 10. They dribbled out a possession and didn't even put up a shot and took a 24 second violation essentially because they were too indifferent to put up a shot. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I, sure I've ever seen that happen. Not, I, that was, I mean, I, I, I read that more as, you know, Reeves got, you know, LeBron dribbled, that kind of dribbled out the clock. He dumped it in. I assume this is possession. We're talking about dumped it into Reeves. 
who was sort of in the post, I don't think he had any clue how much time was left on the shot clock and turn around like and realize, and it was just like, okay, well, that was a, a terrible possession. But yes, that was, I think if you know, on the list of disrespectful things that would be, we would be on it. I mean, it was one of these things like it looked initially like it was going to be almost a carbon copy of Tuesday's game in Toronto where the Lakers got off to a sort of cold and indifferent start, then got quickly got control of the game. The Lakers, you know, one, you know once they uh, clocked in for the, for the game, uh, went from down by uh, 10 or 11 to up by 10 by the end of the first quarter. Um, same kind of little lull there at the, you know, close to the half where Washington comes back. It's a closer game than a halftime. It should be. The Lakers come out in the third quarter, um, and it looks like they're going to they push the lead way back up and, you know, into 15, 16, 17 territory. And then the difference between Tuesday and Wednesday is I think at that point, everybody was thinking about their bed at home. They were thinking about the flights. They were thinking about whatever it is. Uh, they they stopped playing in the same way that they did against Toronto. And again, even down to the guys at the end of the bench who finally, when the game should have been over, up by you know 10 or 11 points with a minute and a half to go and Darwin empties the bench, you end up in a situation where the lead gets cut to five. And for the last possession, they got to put Anthony Davis and the starters and, and LeBron back on the floor, which should never happen. Um, you- I... You said the phrase clocked in as far as what the Lakers did. They finally clocked in. If you want to take that analogy further, this is a game where the Lakers, as far as clocking in, they took a lot of smoke breaks and they did a lot of clocking. And, and, and they clocked out <laughs> before the game was over. I mean, yeah, I think that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, pretty up what they did. I will say this. I, I think, you know, there was a lot of angst. They're ready to go home. Of, yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of, you know, this is the most unserious team I've ever seen. These guys, I mean, it is important to remember. Yes, this was an unserious effort in the sense that, you know, they didn't do the professional thing that you wanted, which was just bury this team. LeBron and AD sit in the fourth quarter. And the the thing that, you know, they certainly could have, should have done, whatever. Um, it wasn't as unserious as what uh, Milwaukee did against Washington on Tuesday, which was lose to the Wizards. That's much more unserious. Um, and I also just think it's important to understand that this, the the second night of a back-to-back, sixth game of a six-game trip, 11th day or 10th day of a 10 or 11th day road trip, this is how most teams sure. handle games like this. And so... You know, th- it was very clear that they were like, we're going to do enough to, you know, they were thinking they were hoping Washington would fold up the tent and go home, which they didn't. But they they were very obviously going to put in the exact amount of effort that it required to win the game. It was not really worried they were going to lose. No, um, and that was it. And, and, and this sort of thing is way more common in the league then i think sometimes you know you you get so focused on what your team is doing there's kind of like a social media like a facebook effect where you just only see the good stuff happening um you know with all these other teams that they're chasing and don't you know locked on pick a team in the western conference they have had they have these nights where they're like i cannot believe you know Team X didn't blow these guys out of the water. What are we doing here? And all that. So it was not ideal, but I, I am uh, I am willing to grade a little bit on a curve given the context of the game. Didn't bother me that much. No, I, look, I'm grading it on what it was. It was a straight C minus D plus type game, other than say Anthony Davis, who had a phenomenal game, uh, mm-hmm. 35 points, 18 rebounds, 10 of 17 from the field, 15 of 15. At the line, three blocks, two. He had eleven free throws in the first quarter. There's a great stat from Stat Muse. Anthony Davis leads all active players in games with at least 35 points and 15 rebounds. Anthony Davis leads all active players in games with two steals, two blocks at least. He did both tonight. Uh, you know, all five starters reached double figures. Like I, I am not in any way taking away 
pessimism from this game or telling fans this was something to worry about. There, there are cracks in the way the Lakers have been playing. Like, no, I, th- there's nothing about this that alarmed me. I'm just not going to grade it on a curve either. They didn't right. play particularly well. It was, it's a fine. It's it was a C minus. It was a C minus effort on a night where they needed a D, and so they they cleared the bar. Um, yes, you know, and exactly. I feel like if if Washington had demanded of them a C plus. Then the Lakers would have delivered a B minus. <laughs> sure. That's that's where we were, uh, exactly. and I'm cool with it. LeBron, uh, we'll get to Jared Vanderbilt here too in a minute. Uh, LeBron though said some really interesting things about why the Lakers, who um, I, I didn't realize this was the number, but apparently the third best record uh, in the NBA since the All Star break, second best in the West. Uh, they've won nine of ten. Like they're they're really playing, you know, good basketball at this point. Um, LeBron had some interesting comments as to why. We'll get to it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. We have a Fire TV stick in our kitchen TV. So while you're cooking, prepping meals, whatever, we have all these options now, watching everything on it. It's awesome. And whether you're talking about opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. They recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And that includes us at Locked On, plus all the big pro leagues and college conferences. There's also news, entertainment, gaming, traveling. There's also news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, You can check out the Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by FanDuel. We have reached a very busy portion of the sports calendar. This is one of those, uh, you know, we get it in the fall. You get it in the spring when a lot of things start to come together in very exciting ways. Right now, obviously, it's the NCAA tournament. Uh, both on the men's and women's side, but baseball has started. We're getting very uh, near the playoffs in both the NHL and the NBA. Uh, So the sports calendar calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Doesn't matter the sport. Doesn't matter how you want to break it down. It's $200 that you can use to bet the tourney, baseball, basketball, uh, hockey, so much more. So you go, you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. I guess, Andy, one of the uh, the selling points of this team going into the season, of course, was supposed to be continuity. That was one of the big words we used a lot in the summertime, a lot of continuity talk. Summer of 2023 was all about continuity. Um, and, of course, uh, it, it has not been as continuous as I think anybody would have liked it to be, whether because of injuries uh, because of coaching choices or because of combinations of those things, uh, the Lakers really haven't had the level of continuity um, from beginning to end that anybody was really hoping for. Um, but since early February, when uh, Rui Hachimura was put into the starting lineup, it hasn't been perfect, but it's been pretty steady as to what this team is, who's going to be playing. Uh, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And LeBron, when asked about like, what is different about this team and why he thinks they are rolling after the, the win on Wednesday night, this is the direction he went. This is the stuff he pointed to. All athletes are creatures of habit. They, they prefer in a perfect world to not just understand why everything's happening around them, but actually agree with it. But the bare minimum they want is to understand it. And to the degree that stuff was within their control this year, the coaching staff's control, it has often felt like the players have not understood exactly why certain things were happening over the course of the season with the rotation. And I don't blame them because I often didn't understand it. 
sometimes they were confusing. Um, and, you know, it was interesting to me that the the Lakers had, rel- you know, they're, they're essentially the full complement of players that are available to them currently. Um, obviously, Jared Vanderbilt is not back in the lineup. We'll talk about him in the next segment, you know, and, and he's going to be reevaluated again next week. Uh, and and whether or not that affords them some opportunities, if he can get back on the floor, uh, to to really integrate him back in the lineup before these play in games. But you know, Gabe Vincent played um, played about fourteen minutes, I believe. Yes, um, and Cam Reddish didn't play at all. So you know, you got thirty eight minutes out of. AD 27 from Rui, who by the way was nine of twelve from the floor, seven rebounds. Rui Hachimura's rebounding surge has been a sort of quietly underrated story for the Lakers, um, adding another dimension to just being a scorer. Um, you know, they needed they need a little more from him. And you know, this this bump in his rebounding of late has been really, really positive. LeBron, 25 points. We mentioned at the top of the show. You talked about D'Lo, you talked about about Reeves. Um, you know, all of those guys except Rui were well over 30 minutes. Your bench was 20 minutes for Dinwiddie, 14 minutes for um for for Gabe Vincent, and 16 for Torian Prince, and then a little bit of uh Jackson Hayes thrown in there. But Cam Reddish didn't play, and like this has basically been what the rotation has looked like for the last month or so, and it's become very Predictable. Yeah. Max Christie got an obligatory four minutes. Um near the you know, end. I, I it's said many times Darvin Ham does not want to play Max Christie unless he feels like he absolutely has to. You can but I don't but wait, let me stop you there though. Like I understand what you're saying. Where would you play him now? No, I just meant because Gabe Vincent is coming back, that was an automatic signal that Max Christie was going to lose the the playing time that he wasn't guaranteed to be getting anyway. Right. Just like the but idea right that now, so- I don't think like I don't think there really is anywhere to play him regular minutes at this no, point. No, I'm, I'm you're going to try to play Vincent and Dinwiddie. Sure, no. What what I what I was getting at was those minutes were going down anyway and Gabe Vincent in a lot of ways is going to be taking the minutes away from Reddish and Christie which felt predictable because before we knew even that Vincent's return was a thing because it has been so tenuous all season. We had talked about how Vanderbilt, during the periods where it felt like he was more likely to come back than Vincent, that Vanderbilt ultimately could end up taking all the minutes that were reddish and Christie's. As somebody who has questioned how cleanly the Lakers are going to be able to get Vincent up to speed alongside teammates he's barely played with all year, I guess one of the upsides, if you're looking for an upside, would be it's pretty easy to find his minutes. It doesn't require much reconfiguring of the rotation because you're starting to get down to guys that I think would be losing minutes if either he or Vando came back anyway. Yeah, and what will be really interesting to see then too is who where the minutes get shaved a little bit in the in the return of Vanderbilt, um, but which we can get to in the next segment a little bit, and I'm sure we'll talk about it through through excuse me the rest of the week. But you know, look, you can't. We talked about this, you know, yesterday. Like you can't go back in time and and undo the you know and and kind of wish cast this sort of consistency in the rotation. And to be fair, you know, you couldn't play Rui 30 minutes a night when he was injured. You couldn't play, you know, Vanderbilt. You know, there are other guys who've been in and out and and unavailable. That said, there has been a resistance to moving in this direction. Um, And then, you know, you can't kind of wish cast away the, the fact that like all of this winning and the conference still isn't cooperating. Phoenix blew out you know, uh, Cleveland on, on Wednesday. And so the Lakers have gained again on Wednesday, grand total of nothing on anyone, (laughs) you know, (laughs) 0.0. I mean, that's where they are. Um, and it, it's interesting to me to hear them talk about it in these terms because it's, it's gotta be frustrating, but at the same time, and I think LeBron is working really hard 
um, to instill this mentality. And you see a lot of guys, a lot of other guys reflecting it of this is what it is. Like we are going to land where we land. All we can control is the next game in front of us and playing and, and playing as well as we possibly can because, you know, the Lakers, if they run the table, can win 50 games. <laughs> like, and that might get them to an eight. Like, if they win but fifty, that, I think I think they'll get to they'll get to eight. It is, but it's insane. not guaranteed. It's insane how difficult the West has been this year. If the Lakers are currently eleven games above five hundred, last year that's a four seed. Yep. This year that is a reasonably comfortable nine seed. Like, it's not even like you got the nine sewed up, don't even No, it's like you it. better keep winning because you don't want that last game against Golden State to be determinant of that right. thing. It's like the Golden State, who seems to have gotten their act back together, and, you know, uh, they've won seven of ten, five in a row. Like, they're going to be six or so. They're currently seven games over. They're going to be six, six, seven, eight, nine games over 500 as a ten. You know, so the Lakers are going to legitimately. I, I think they're going to finish their eleven over now. I think they'll split this weekend. We'll talk about it more, um, you know, through the rest of the week. But and then I think they'll they'll go four and two over their last six games. If they go four and two, they're thirteen games over five hundred, and they're going to be the nine. <laughs> like that is bonkers. In the, in the meantime, the Hawks and Bulls have clinched their play in bids four games below five hundred. Yes respectfully bleep both of you <laughs> seriously bleep yep. both of those franchises all right let's talk jared respectfully. vanderbilt next respectfully no next locked on lakers is brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from those other retirement accounts that you have with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. And this offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robin.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risks, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. You must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA applies to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. It's frustrating that they can't seem to get a lot of tangible benefits from it, but um, they have crossed, I think, well into the team that I'm not sure a lot of teams want to see in the main draw. Um I don't think they're going to be Unless you're Denver or Sacramento. Right. Uh, but Sacramento's got their own problems. Like, you know, Sacramento may not make it to the main draw uh, the way things are going for them right now. Um, and so I, so much of the answers to these questions, too, depend on Jared Vanderbilt. The update was sort of a non-update, is, is pushing it to being re uh, evaluated again next week. So, you know, by next week, the Lakers are down to four games. They play on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and we are running out of time to get Jared Vanderbilt on the floor because I'm not sure you want – like you want a game, right, of like let him run around oh. a little bit before the play-in, don't you? If you are looking for any type of glass half-full benefits to the Lakers seemingly – resigned to a nine seed that they cannot get their way out of despite winning at like a 75% clip since February, they can't get out of the nine seed. If you, it, if you're trying to get Jared Vanderbilt up to speed for the actual playoffs, assuming you get into them, the extra two games, isn't the worst thing in the world. Like I'm, I'm being serious. No, about it's true. That. I understand like, what you mean. Like, again, it, it, 
sounds a little bit tongue in cheek just because I acknowledge it's so ridiculous to even frame it that way. But even acknowledging the ridiculousness of it, I'm not being unserious when I say it. it assuming that you win both of those play in games, which is necessary whether Jared Vanderbilt <laughs> comes back or not. Correct. <laughs> you get the two extra games to get Vanderbilt up to speed. That's not nothing. It's look, you know, there's a reason they're called silver linings and not like platinum. Just silver. Platinum <laughs> diamond encrusted <laughs> lining. Right. It's a silver lining. It's not a a, a whole silvery thing. So it's like we're looking for the bright side here. And yes, you're correct. Like they 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 might need those opportunities to get Vanderbilt some minutes there. And meanwhile, look, like the whole landscape of the of the West, because Phoenix refuses to follow the script and lose with this brutal schedule that they've been playing, in part uh, aided by the fact that like teams like, like the Clippers um, have not been uh, particularly good of late, and you know Cleveland has been they got Kawhi you know, problems. Yeah, well, they, 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 they you know Cleveland has been all over the map, which is good for the Lakers who are playing Cleveland on Saturday. Um, it depends but, which part of the map they discover. That's true. But, you know, now all of a sudden it's the Lakers and the Kings are a game in front of them. And they're like, remember the Lakers got to clear the Kings by two to move up. But now new Orleans is suddenly in the, in the, in the seven after Wednesday's games, because they've lost three in a row. Phoenix has, 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 has won, um, uh, you know, has won two in a row in seven of 10. And now all of a sudden, like, are we getting to a place where that game on the last game of the season where the Lakers are playing the Pelicans could mean something? It's like this stuff is shifting so fast. And if the Pelicans can't get their act together, you know, a f this is not a great conference <laughs> for like a six game losing streak. Like it's like if like it's that's where you want to be rolling, you know, it's not a good conference for two game losing. It's not a good conference for a loss. You know, you, you know, we the Pelicans like a week ago were like, look at those guys rocketing up the standings, dropping like a rock because they've lost three in a row. A week um, or two ago, my hope with the Pelicans was for the Lakers' last game of the season, they looked like a team that might potentially be locked into their seed either way, and they wouldn't even have to try in that game. No, that that was my hope. Yeah, that, that that's not happening anymore. No! Um, you know, it, it, it is impossible to figure out like night to night who do you work because like all of a sudden it's like wait a minute now we're we need to start rooting for New Orleans to lose like it, it, you know do does this mean we need to start rooting for Phoenix to start winning again like yeah you know, it's it's all very confusing and all this is why though that you know and we don't know if Jared Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt's going to be back in time to play one game two games three games no games but this is why LeBron. And Anthony Davis and you know Darwin to some degree, like they're all just saying the same thing is we got to take care of ourselves and we will land where we land. If they keep playing good basketball, they win five of six, they have a decent chance of moving up, maybe 50-50. That's really annoying to have to say out loud. <laughs> you win five of your last six, which would mean that they won, they've won nine of ten. You add five of six to that, it means you're 14 and two in your last. 16 games and you might make up one spot in the standings but the point being is if you if you start getting wrapped up on where are we then you'll start losing games and if you lose games then none of this matters anyway right i just took a look at tankathon and the remaining strength of schedule phoenix still has the hardest remaining strength of schedule though apparently doesn't matter um, remember how the Lakers had fallen down to like 22nd? We were all excited. That right, but now they're back up because the, the games left are hard. Yeah, they're back up to seven. Like, this is BS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just is. Uh, but, you know, it, it is, it's the Cavaliers, it's the Timberwolves, it's the Warriors, which is, it's actually not a bad thing to have a head to head game against the Warriors. It's the Grizzlies. And then that game I mentioned against the Pelicans, the only team in that group that is god awful is the Grizzlies. You know, this is why these games against the Wizards, the Raptors, the Nets, the Grizzlies game after the Bucks game. I, I, of all the, the games on the road trip, Andy, I'll be honest with you, one of the most impressive to me, I mean, I think the most impressive was coming back down from 19 to beat Milwaukee, although uh, apparently beating Milwaukee is not the thing <laughs> that we, you know, they lost at home after losing to. 
You talk about unserious teams. People can complain about the Lakers all they want. Milwaukee just did the back-to-back losses to Washington and Memphis. Well, I am like not the- here to get to listen to upset people freaking out because the Lakers didn't put in a professional enough effort against the Wizards in the last game of this trip. You go talk like, to Locked on Bucks. It feels like Doc may not have set a great tone when he announced his hiring by saying, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Well, he's and it's, he started to like, it seemed like they were kind of climbing out of that hole. Yeah, we were making too much fun of Doc. No, apparently we weren't. The Lakers took care of business, and it's and while like yes, it would be nice to see them move up. It's annoying that they haven't, and it's annoying that they're in this position. It was not a guarantee a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, that if they hit a little bit of a skid, they would still be in the playoffs, um, or you know, certainly they wouldn't be the nine. So, I mean, it is what it is. Like they're 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 winning games there and all of that stuff, and they have. A chance to move up, like uh, I, 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 we'll talk about it tomorrow. I, I am fascinated by what the long term prospects are for like the direction of this team. Um, it's something we can get into. We'll look forward to the weekend. Uh, we'll look, you know, the, this these critical back to back they're playing, the last back to back of the season. Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you can hang out with over twenty three thousand subscribers to the show. Leave us questions, leave us comments. A great time for that with two uh, an extra day off uh, before the Lakers play again. Uh, we will see everyone tomorrow.